Welcome, and thanks for your interest in Komatsu products. Today we're going to cover how to properly conduct a pre-operation inspection for the Dash 11 excavator. Now the reason we do a pre-operation inspection is just to take a quick look at the machine and inspect it for any damage, excessive wear, or any leaks. Getting in the habit of doing this will go a long way towards maximizing the longevity and the production of the machine. Everything we cover today is also included in the operation and maintenance manual inside the cab. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so generally to get started, we're going to begin at our work equipment and work our way back towards the machine. On an excavator with a bucket, what you're going to do is just ensure that there's no excessive wear, or any kind of cracks or anything like that with the actual bucket. We'll take a look at our cutting edges and our teeth, make sure all the pins are in place and there's no excessive wear or damage to any of the parts. And from here, we're going to move to our pins and our linkage, and all we're looking for here is to ensure that our keeper bolts are in place and that everything's being properly lubricated. After that, we're going to start with our arm and our boom inspection. So what we're looking for when we inspect the arm and the boom is just any signs of obvious wear or damage to our hydraulic lines, our cylinders, and our welds. That'll bring us back down towards the machine where we can get a good look at our boom cylinders, our piping, and our hydraulic hoses to ensure that all of our bolts and everything is in place. So after you've inspected all of your hydraulic lines, you can go ahead and take a look at the boom foot, make sure everything's receiving proper amount of lubrication, as well as at your boom cylinders, your top hat, and your swing circle. This is also a good opportunity to go ahead and take a quick peek underneath the machine to see if you notice any signs of leaks. Okay, now that we've wrapped up here, we can go ahead and start working our way around the machine. We're actually going to go up onto the upper structure. Before we do that, we want to double check, make sure that our access points look good, including our mirrors and our handrails. Also want to make sure you always use proper mounting and dismounting techniques whenever you access the machine. Okay, now that we've accessed the machine, first thing we're going to do is open up the first step, take a look at our batteries, and just make sure that we don't have any loose connections or any corrosion or anything that might be going wrong. This is also the location of our main battery disconnect switch. So moving our way up the machine, we're going to have the location of your death tank fill spot, which you can tell because of the blue cap. From here, we're going to get all the way up on top and do the rest of our checks. Okay, so now that we're on top of the machine, we can go ahead and make a few checks right away. First is the location of your fuel fill spot. These machines utilize ultra low sulfur diesel. You got the location of the lube bank for the cylinders on the back side of the boom. While you're here too, you can take a quick look at your brackets and your piping to make sure there's no damage or any leaks. Got the location of the swing motor's check spot. You also got a really good view of the control valve where you can check all your hydraulic lines to make sure that there's no signs of leaks. From here, we can go ahead and swing around to the back side of the cab. Got the location of the standard pattern change valve where you can switch the machine between standard ISO and backhoe configuration. If everything's okay here, we can go ahead and move on to the engine. Okay, once you get the hood open, the first thing you're going to do is just perform a visual check of everything around the engine. Basically looking for any debris or any obvious signs of leakage or damage. From there, go ahead and take a look at your coolant, make sure you have adequate fluid levels. You can check your engine oil right here, and then also make sure that there's no contamination in your pre-filter. That pretty much covers it from an operation standpoint. If you want more extensive information or specifics related to the type of engine fluids, please refer to your O&M manual. Okay, now that we're back down on the ground, we can go ahead and continue our inspection, starting with our undercarriage. What you want to do is just do a basic visual inspection, starting at the idler, looking at all your rollers and your shoes and pads, taking a quick look at track tension, ending at the final drive and sprockets, just making sure there's no signs of wear or any damage. That'll bring you back here to the cooler room, where also your air filters are located. You want to just basically do another visual inspection, looking for excessive debris or any kind of plugging in the core. 
making sure that your air filter latches are all secure and there's no signs of any damage or leaks. Okay, if everything looks good in here, go ahead and continue to work our way around to the back side of the machine. First thing we'll do is check the rear view camera, just make sure there's no signs of damage. Go ahead and look underneath the machine, making sure there's no leaks. Also take a look at the back side of the undercarriage and frame for any kind of damage. This is also a really good opportunity to take a peek up at the undercovers and make sure that they look okay. If everything's all right here, we'll continue to work our way around to the pump room. Again, be mostly visual checks at first, checking all our lines and connections, just making sure we don't see any signs of leaks. A couple fluid level checks for your windshield wiper fluid and also the location of the sight glass for the hydraulic fluid. As we work our way to the cab, we'll go ahead, take a step back real quick and do the same visual inspection of the undercarriage that we performed on the other side of the machine. Go ahead and take a quick look at our exterior cab filter. And then another visual check of the cab itself, checking out the mirrors and the windows, just making sure there's no obvious signs of damage. Prior to entering the machine, we always wanna check our access points, make sure that there's no damage to those. If everything checks out, that would conclude the pre-operation inspection. We can go ahead and operate. 